Hi, this is Brent with Studio One Expert, and in this free four-part series, I'm going to be showing you how you can use four waves plugins to get a great electronic bass sound. Let's take a listen to the track. So the bass sound on this track is compromised of three different fundamental bass sounds. There's a sub bass, a precision electric bass, and there's also a Moog Model D bass. Now in this first episode, we're going to take a look at the sub bass. I'm going to show you a way that you can use Waves R bass to create some artificial low end without boosting frequencies, causing masking issues, and trying to elevate a frequency region which doesn't actually exist for that instrument. So. I have this Serum sub track here, and it's just a really, really basic um, duplicate of these other tracks. So you will need to be wearing good headphones or monitors to hear this, but it does make a big impact on the track. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and load up our bass. Now, I've always loved our bass. The reason is it's such a simple plugin to understand and to use, and it can really make or break the low end on a track. So. In this instance, I'm going to use a technique that I've learned from Alan Myerson, which is around about 42 to 60 hertz, you can get some really, really strong sub frequencies. So if I dial this right down to 42, this frequency here controls where the fundamental is going to be harmonically generated. Then in the center here, I can use this intensity knob to decide how much of that artificial harmonic I want to bring out. So chances are I might have to bring this down a tiny bit and then adjust the gain. So let's have a listen to what this is doing straight off the bat with uh, the frequency engaged at 42 hertz. So as we can hear, there is a huge difference there. Let's have a listen to it engaged and bypass just as it is. So undoubtedly, it makes a massive change to the low end of this track, but I do want to rein in that intensity just because it's a little bit overpowering and I don't want that to be the case when it's on different playback systems. So I'm going to just mess around with the controls here and let's hear how it can change the sound once we've done so. Now, if we listen carefully, there's actually been no change in gain, so that's really good. We're just actually bringing out the harmonic content, so it's as simple as that. We can see the original bass as well, which is a nice representation as to how much we're actually adding, um, but it's literally that simple. So you adjust the frequency here to work in coordination with the track that you're mixing, and then just adjust the intensity and the gain if there is any gain staging issues, but that makes a huge difference to the bass sound. Let's have a listen to the overall bass sound in the track now, engaging and bypassing this. <laughs> And I think in context with the track, I'd probably just bring the intensity up a tiny little bit more, just so I can really be sure that it's going to be there on systems where I want the low end to be really present and drive the mix along. So I hope that you found this video useful, and I'll see you in part two.